Let's call the meeting to order. This is the um, March 4 meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. Uh, it's about 6 o'clock. We're also going to have a joint meeting with the Finance Committee at 6.30. And we're being filmed or videoed by Frontier Community Access Television for viewing later on by our residents and the public. Okay, first item on the agenda is our minutes from the February 25th meeting. Has everybody reviewed the minutes? Yeah. Um, any corrections or amendments? About this no. no. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for the uh, February 25th meeting. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Thank Aye. you, Lisa. Excellent as usual. You're welcome. Uh, next item on the agenda, we have three warrants. We have a vendor warrant for 180, $38,176, a payroll warrant for $104,777, and a payroll deduction warrant of $26,563. I'll make a motion that we uh, accept those warrants. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay. Meetings attended by select board members. Phil. Yeah, just uh, chock full of juicy school committee budget meetings. <laughs> Um, there was a, uh, yeah, three meetings on last Thursday, um, budget committee and, uh, uh, the frontier school committee met at the Conway grammar school. And then the Conway grammar school committee met right after that, where preliminary budgets were displayed to the public. And one among us had the sorry task of explaining <sighs> why it is the way it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Then you will hopefully do that at town meeting. Uh, yeah, uh, that that vacation week in New Orleans is looking <laughs> really good for that week, though. And That's nice. yeah. Just what you're looking for. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So apparently, yeah, I'm gonna have to. Thank you, Phil. Yeah. Robert. That's it for you. Yeah. On the uh, the 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 committee to the hiring committee for the budget for the uh, finance director has gotten mm. underway. Oh, good. Reviews okay. have started. Of applications? Yes. And how many applications were there? Fifteen. Mm. Good. Of mm -hmm. which several look, prom look significantly promising. So Excellent. They are, the, word is, the word on the street is good. How about garage pit? Ah, and I want to thank you for reminding me. I went to the garage committee as well. I want to hear about it. Yes, yes. So, yes, the garage committee, um, which is the highway facility committee yeah. now. Yeah. Um, and you know there there is a significant change in the proposal from the last time. Um, besides the, the so I'm going to let the committee speak for itself. But I'm a big fan of the the language being used, the work that's being done. Um, so uh, I, I think that the project will be put in a position where it's more attractive to the town meeting voters. Is my assessment of it from split in half as two separate pieces yes yes or at least with that option being proposed yeah, yeah. but um there's just the the, the language of self-sufficiency and doing it yourself is kind of creeping in there and um i think that that's going to go over well so my the, the odds makers in vegas are increasing the odds of this uh, <laughs> occurring now i'm told so i'm not a betting man no no <coughs> neither am i but Okay. Yes. Robert? So I had a bunch. I did. I went to the two budget meetings also, as did Tom and the Finance Committee. Uh, and it was nice to look at the school budgets. The grammar school budget looks good. The Frontier budget, due to a odd uh, way that the budget formula works, Conway is virtually funding the entire increase at Frontier. And it feels eminently unfair and it feels that we are powerless to do much about it and the other towns expressed sympathy but basically <laughs> said yeah. now it's our turn and you know whether they have actually been carrying more than their share in the past i don't know but it, i hadn't <coughs> thought that but anyway that was that was the way it came out mm. The nature of that beast is that one town at least feels aggrieved every single year. Mm -hmm. But it seems like that was our fate last year and the, sort of the year before, too. So. Yeah. 
Okay. So, so um, we had a conservation commission meeting on Tuesday. Uh, and the big project we worked on there was looking at the next amp uh, design mm -hmm. and many people like me on the Conservation Commission are new and it's hard to know exactly what our powers are and next amp is presenting to us um, a plan that treats the buffer areas around the wetlands areas as places where they are free to do almost whatever they want. And Conway's history has been to treat the buffer areas around wetlands as somewhat more sacred than that. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, we asked them to come back with a plan treating the buffer areas more carefully. So, mm -hmm. so we'll see how it goes. With 100 foot, you're looking at the 100 foot? Two, two well, it's a hundred foot around the bu around the wetlands, uh -huh. and um, and they're they're sort of honoring about a ten foot buffer area around the wetlands. <laughs> yeah. And and the law is not clear, and many towns have adopted <clears throat> a, um, a very sacred buffer area around wetlands. And then it be, it's very clear when somebody comes to the town and gives us a set of plans, they know what they have to do. We don't have any uh, bylaw that says how to treat the buffer areas. And maybe that would help, maybe, you know, but um, they, they, they feel like they are following state law. And the Conservation Commission has the discretion to enforce a much stricter buffer area than what they're following. And fortunately, I mean, we, there were probably 20 local neighbors from around the site who were very concerned with water quality and, you know, lots, lots of the things that are involved with wetlands. And yeah. So we did have a lot of support. Yeah. Um, so we'll see how it goes at the next meeting. Okay. Uh, and uh, in my newness on the Conservation Commission, I went to the annual uh, conference that they had at Holy Cross on Saturday oh with, with one of the other new members of the Conservation Commission. And, and, and they offer a lot of nice courses for new Conservation Commission members. It's kind of like going to Selectman 101, you know, sure. you went to. And, and uh, they're great. They're, they're great. You know, they were good courses. Um, and then what was better was meeting a lot of the other Conservation Commission members and people from the EPA and you know to some extent I went there with the hope of learning about 100 foot buffer areas okay. and what we have to do. Mm. Um, and we had a conservation site visit just uh, for the interest of it if but we went there's a couple telephone poles that are going to go in on one on Maple Street mm -hmm. and one just up the street a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, Eversource is in the process of really beefing up uh, the power in Conway, and I think we got a note from them about that. We'll be having we're, the poll hearing at seven. And so, yes, yeah, so we'll have the poll hearing yeah. about that today. So we went and did a site visit for those polls because they're fairly near wetlands, mm. they're uh, resource areas. So. Okay. So that was me. Okay. Thank you, Robert. Um, all right. Well, the MA, MMA had uh, called to the board of directors to support the governor in his new announcement or his refiling of the Housing Choice Bill in Boston last uh, Wednesday, so I was at the State House for that, and uh, it was very well attended. Uh, that's for, you know, increasing the housing stock here in Massachusetts, especially on the affordable housing side. Um, and that was very well supported, not only by the MMA, but there were a lot of other um, municipal officials there. Were there any changes to it? Um, to last year's bill? Uh, it's it's almost it's almost the same. It's almost the same. Because it seemed like there was no way we in Conway could could participate. Well, you know, that that's one of the one of the one of the problems was that uh, it, it's a little bit uh, it, it's meant for larger Larger and, 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 and growing municipalities, yeah, when, you know, with they, infrastructure to support <laughs> significant yeah. residential developments that developers would be proud to do, yeah, yes, yeah. 
Uh, and then I had a uh, Massachusetts Selectmen's Association regional meeting in Boston on Thursday where uh, we discussed the recycling problem and I sent out some information to you guys on that and I sent it to Carl mm -hmm. and um, there's a couple of grant programs that can be applied for um, so hopefully uh, he can get a couple of those submitted so and that's what I had okay next uh, next Public comment. Do we have any public comment? I don't see any public comment. That's good. Okay. Old business. Okay. The Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership. Peggy and Beth, you're on. <laughs> do you like me to start or would you like to start? Yeah, I don't have much. I've, I've spoken a little bit to these guys, but why don't you? Okay. So um, this project we've been working on with, uh, for four years, over four years at this point, with um, 21 towns in mm -hmm. Western Franklin and Northern Berkshire County. And last um, year, at, uh, during the summer, and then there was an amendment at the end of the year, the legislation passed, which was very exciting, mm -hmm. um, that the advisory committee had put together. And the advisory committee has 20 of the 21 towns represented. Um, that was a request when we went out to, for public meetings that there be strong local input. And so the legislation w that was developed was the advisory committee um, reviewed that and had a lot of input on that. Um, and so now we're at a point where in order to proceed and get funding, we need towns to opt in. And so we're here to invite Conway to participate. Um, there's two ways of opting in. One is a select board vote and one is a town meeting vote. In my letter, you have both options uh, laid out. Um, but we're hoping that we have um, at least 11 towns, hopefully more, opt-in so that we can pursue uh, state funding and we're also hopeful that we'd like to pursue some federal funding um, to get some additional resources into the region. And I think most of you know that this is an economically distressed area um, that could really benefit some from some additional natural resource-based economic development, but there's also a forest land conservation piece and also looking at ways to improve the financial situation of the municipalities in the region and that was a specific <coughs> request that came out through the, the community meetings. So the goals, purpose haven't changed since previous presentations on this project. It's been sort of a long, <laughs> a long process um, but feel like we're making good progress um, and hope that the, the project can proceed. And I'm happy to answer any questions. I know it's a lot of information mm -hmm. in the legislation. Mm -hmm. um, now, the legislation that was changed because of some opposition to biofuel? Uh, the, actually, the, the amendment act had to do with making it very clear that the entity that was being set up had to follow all state finance laws, all mm -hmm. state ethics laws, and all state open and then open meeting law mm -hmm. just to make sure that everything was transparent mm -hmm. and so that was something that we thought was clear because it was re reviewed by house council um, but uh, governor M baker wanted to make that absolutely clear mm -hmm. um, there is a, a section in the legislation that specifically addressed um, a manufacturing facility for pellets and it, it prohibits the use of any funding that's received by the Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership for that purpose. And that was a request um, from some folks that were very concerned about the use um, of that particular uh, fuel. Is it just pellets or chips also? It basically says any um, uh, wood uh, manufacturing facility. I think it might say specifically pellets, but it, it, it the intent was the intention that is broader was, than was that. broader that it wasn't it wasn't going to be used for that purpose <coughs> because there were concerns about um, potential impacts. It it doesn't mean that it's not about that there's other it, it wouldn't prohibit people from uh, harvesting wood for heating purposes. Sure. It's yeah. about you know, manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Well, the governor has just funded some large chip mm -hmm. infrastructure mm -hmm. in Amherst, in Ashfield, the uh, Asheville Dalton. One. Did the Asheville one get funded? I don't know. I, I know mm -hmm. there was one in Dalton. Yeah. <coughs> Maybe there was the Roberts and, Brothers. 
in Asheville. Yeah. I, th I, I know they went to specific loggers. Yeah. 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 I don't know if it was. Well, so, anyway, people, so that makes aside. people nervous about where all that wood is going to come from for them to turn into wood chips, mm -hmm. let alone the pellets. But. Yeah, right, right at the end, um, the, the very last clause um, of, the, uh, of the legislation, which is the next to the last sheet in your packet, mm -hmm. number seven, no funding received or expended by the partnership shall be used for one the construction or operation of a wood pellet or biomass, biomass. manufacturing facility, right. or two, for the United States government and its agency, the United States Forest Service, to hold a fee interest in any real property in the Mohawk Trail Wood Farms Partnership Sorry. Activities Sorry. area. That was yeah. another key request that there would be no increase in publicly owned lands because of the impacts on the tax base. That right. if there was land conservation, it had to just be a CR um, for private landowners. So really comparable to um, the APR program. It would allow uh, property owners that have smaller parcels of forest land to um, potentially be able to protect their property since the funding for forest conservation is is um, pretty scarce and it seems to be the larger projects that get funded, um, not the, the smaller ones. And we have a lot of smaller parcels in the region. Yeah, so most of the opposition to the original version has been quelled by the newer version of the bill. Um, I think passed. the bill the bill incorporated that concern. Mm -hmm. the, the the um, the change really was that folks wanted to have a new plan developed um, and a new set of recommendations um, and make it very clear what the priorities were. So I think um, well you know folks may still have some concerns. Uh, the advisory committee has done. A lot of work to try and address that. Some of the advisory, some of the um, partnership board members that were added because of the concerns raised was a public health um, representative from the University of Mass and also a, a forest ecology carbon cycling um, uh, professor or expert also from UMass. So to bring in sort of the academic and the research um, to make sure that any policies or programs that were being developed by the advisory committee had that input um, to reflect those concerns. Um, we also had UMass do a pretty cutting edge and it's still, they're still working on an air quality study of actual facilities. Um, some are in the region but also outside the region of what the emissions were from uh, different um, commercial scale pellet uh, boilers um, and that hadn't been done before and so they are, they are testing, um, they tested uh, the air quality at several different facilities including Sanderson um, and a facility up in Row and they, the preliminary results they presented but they're doing more detailed analysis. Um, we're hoping that maybe they can get some funding to go back out and do some more testing, mm -hmm. um, which would be great. Mm -hmm. is, well that, is, that was part of it too, that the, there's a different program that's, in, that's encouraging schools to put in pellet boilers and wood burning boilers. Yeah. Yeah. boilers. Highly efficient wood That's boilers. a federal program. That's yeah. a federal program. And well, it's, it's called Sapphire, so um, the state does run that program, but that's oh. separate from right. the mm -hmm. Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership. Mm -hmm. Is there any opportunity, if, if uh, Conway were to join, for the Conway Town Forests to get any uh, support in terms of uh, forestry management plans or anything like that? Yes, there would be an opportunity for that. Um, that was one of the ideas, was to provide technical assistance to create forest management plans. So public um, landowners are included, it's not just private yes. landowners. Excellent. So mm -hmm. towns could get help with forests. We also have had discussions about doing a carbon market credit uh, project, um, and it hasn't gone that far because it's, it's pretty detailed in terms of the feasibility <laughs> study that goes into that. Really um, high, higher mass. Uh, yes, <laughs> but there are some other communities that joined together and they had enough acreage to make it work. Um, it's These are credits that are sold on the voluntary market by uh, corporations, um, purchased by corporations, and so that might be a project that's also of interest. In that case, we'd be looking for town-owned forest lands. <coughs> um, 
and also uh, maybe watershed lands if they were interested in, in working on a project like that. So mm -hmm. yes, there's definitely some potential for municipal projects. Any other questions for? Uh, uh, What's most important, that the town pass this or that the town get the highest degree of participation as possible? I think it's really up to each community what they'd like, how they'd like to proceed. It's um, a complicated project, so if you did want to go take it to town meeting, you'd, we would need to do some public outreach, provide some assistance with that. Um, so it's, at this point, we can't, the funding can't be secured or we can't pursue funding until there's 11 towns to actually activate this entity that's been created. Well, I mean, that's, that's we're kind of where I was going with it. I think it, it's probably easier for us to just say it's passed. Da, da, da. Mm -hmm. It's probably more pleasant of an experience um, probably. For, for that to happen as well. But does, does that guarantee, that is, is that the route to go to get the highest level of participation or is the outreach here it is. This you mean is why well, partici to participate? Yeah, participation yeah. is voluntary, and it would be aside from municipally owned forests that the land. It would be more larger landowners in town. It's not. It's not every single person in town is going to be a direct participant in this project, and and not everyone's land is going to even. I mean, I own 24 acres of forest. Am I going to be part of this project? No, I'm not. Um, people with 100 acres, they could be something, they might be interested in seeing what this could bring them, what this could, what this could mean, or the way they manage their forest, or if they are looking at maybe into the future conservation restrictions or something. So I don't know the answer to that question, actually. Well, I was hoping for a recommendation from you, since you are the one that has invested the most in this. <laughs> I have. That I your have feelings been. on this subject ought to be. My feelings? My feelings have been um, back and forth about this. I, I mean, I've, I'm, I've lived in town long enough to, to know what it is to go to town meeting with a complicated project that people aren't necessarily, it might depend on the weather that day, if they're going to vote on it or not. So I would hate to have all this, all this effort go away because you could also vote this in and then opt out at well, some point. We don't there's there isn't there, uh, there, there isn't specifically an opt out provision, although that's come up and maybe oh. that's oh, oops. I so it wasn't um, opt out. But if there isn't any funding that comes or the towns decide that they don't want to proceed, the the partnership itself can be dissolved. Mm -hmm. yeah. The reason why there isn't an opt-out provision is everything's voluntary. So, you know, right. so you're you're eligible now. You decide you want to participate. That opens up options for um, residents that live in town that want to conserve forests. Uh, it opens up options for smaller businesses to maybe access some of the programs that are envisioned, and it opens up options potentially for municipal grants to help out with things like emergency response if you have an increase in tourism or other recreational related types of activities that are consistent with the goals. So in some respects it's kind of like the scenic byways program where it's a designation that allows access mm -hmm. to some additional resources and programs. Mm -hmm. So there's... Which a lot of people are really sore about and they think that that was a bad deal for the town, the increase in noise and just huge crowds of motorcycles clogging up and ruining the aesthetics and da 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 da, -da. They, I, th I think they, they were here more here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the articles in the <laughs> motorcycle magazines that because of the scenic roads designation. Ah. I've heard a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah, my, my recommendation would be the, for the select board to pass it because that would guarantee Conway, um, you know, owners of large chunks of forest, the, the option to participate right. in yeah. things. And they might not yeah. have that option if it weren't, um, you know, if, if, if some of the misunderstandings that have been cured were brought up again and not, you know, people didn't understand that they've been addressed. There are all kinds of opportunities for misunderstanding. So this, this would allow so my, those things My the next question is, it's, since the statute, uh, the enabling statute apparently lets an either-or town or select board, 
if, if this would, just for the sake of argument, go before town meeting in a warrant, and town meeting would say no, could the select board the very next week enact it? Yeah. Ooh. No, no, I, I, <laughs> that, I we're getting too far into the weeds here. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I, I've been involved with this as a because of FERCOG for like four years now. I was in favor of the original plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's been revised and made quote better. Okay. And I, I certainly would. Why are you put it in air quotes? <laughs> Well, he liked it before, just as well. Because he liked it before. You know, liked it before. Some people yeah. are saying it's better. I, I don't know whether it's it's better, but it's <laughs> it's different. Okay, mm -hmm. and you know, certainly I think um, you know the work that's been done on this and the benefits of this this program, are, I, I think, are great. The, you know, for our environment, for our forest management, and I think I think we should take a vote here tonight. To, uh, to I, pass this, I think many of the changes are necessary to get it to pass. I mean, you know, well, to pass the legislature. To pass the legislature. Yes. I mean, there, 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 there was opposition, and and our reps were nervous about the fact that it was being opposed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, and now that opposition has yeah. dissolved, and it's Most, been passed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and and, and we've tried very. The advisory committee has worked it, very hard it, it to find and address cynical, It wasn't cynically addressing it. It was actually legitimately saying, okay, well, this is a, this is a concern that we mm -hmm. actually want to take a deeper right. look at and figure out how we can make this a better, and, and no the, air quotes, Bill, a and, better and, piece yeah. of yeah. And the, and, the advise, and the advisory committee <laughs> has, you said, 20 representatives from the 21 towns. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, this, is, this has been full participation in terms of yeah. putting this, this together. I, I mean, really... I, I, I do I I would um, recommend is too strong a word for the for the position that I'm in, but it would be great if the select board would decide that this is something that they wanted to approve. Because then the whole once eleven towns do this, then this whole thing could start and it could stop being speculative and it could start being real. Mm -hmm. Which would be great if it could start being real. Any other think. questions, gentlemen? Um Okay. I'll make a motion that we... Um, oh, yeah. Did you get the wording that's in the uh, we letter have, there? Where is it? Yeah. Uh, second page second. of the letter. <coughs> Draft select board motion oh, about halfway down. Good. Okay. <laughs> Are we ready? <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll like make it. a motion that the town of Conway agrees to participate in the activities of the Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership as provided for in section 91 of chapter 209 of the acts of 2018 an act promoting climate change adaptation environmental and natural resource protection and investment in recreational assets and opportunity the environmental bond bill do i have a second second all in favor aye aye it was almost worth it just to hear you say climate change adaptation. <laughs> Is that an eye from you there, Phil? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. so it's Great. unanimous. Okay, that's wonderful. Thank Ladies, you so much. Thank, so thank you, you so much. And if you with, guys want me work. to continue as a representative, so nominated. Actually, Absolutely. So nominated. Absolutely. Okay. You will. <laughs> All right, I thought I'd have a few minutes. We have your contract right here. <laughs> 16 more years. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that'll be no, it's, official the end it's of actually, the uh, It's actually a very interesting, it's a, it's, I'm happy to represent Conway. It's okay. a great group of folks. Yeah, it's a good, yeah. it's a good, very, very thoughtful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks going, for coming in. Thank you. Going, but I'll be Beth, back. Thanks for coming in. I'll see you be again. back for the nice citizens. To see you. I'll be back at thank 8. Thank you. Ooh. We'll see you at the caucus. <laughs> good. I want to stay this long mm -hmm. here. Have fun in Buffalo. Sorry, guys. Shelburne. Are oh, you up there now? Same difference. Yes. Same difference. No, I, the, the advisory committee members are scheduling the meeting, so I'm just trying to keep up with them. Ah. <laughs> Nate. Right. Take care, folks. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Okay, it's, um, it's almost 6.30. We have the finance committee Come here. on in. Perfect timing. How are you, Alan? Very good. Thanks, Jen. Are you alone here? Roy's coming. I think I'll do it. You should get the good chair then. 
Roy? Yeah, well, the there's, the, there's the there's the. Oh, yeah. the table's sure. got some yards. You might be yeah. the oldest person in the room. There, I know. <laughs> so uh, Andrea's still away. Or she unavailable. is. She's out of town. She still owns her business and lives in Canada. Well, I have goodies. First thing I have are uh, materials for the finance committee. And we see you one for Roy. And then I have the big goodie. I am very pleased if we can begin. It's 6.30, um, um, I think. Do you, are you expecting anybody else? Roy, he's coming. He's on his okay, what, what time is Roy coming? Well, I called him eight minutes ago when he was leaving his house. Oh, okay. And he lived All right. two miles from here. Two miles. Mm -hmm. And he knows to be here, not town hall. All right, well. He's looking for All right, yeah, let's, let's, yeah. let's start. Let's try it back. I got a uh, start on I, I am very, very pleased to present the FY 2020. You sound way too happy about this. Yeah. Uh, this is a good one. This is good. This is, good. this is what was given out last Thursday? No, this is new today. This tastes oh, like, I feel like good. I'm at a funeral when I look at this stuff. No, no, no one has this. seen this. This is, this is uh, and, and it is, as we speak, being published on the website. Dropping, as they say, oh. in the biz. Oh, you are so hep. Dropping, huh? you start the review so there there is all kinds of good news here um, let me just walk you through the he's more positive than you yeah yeah well you know for all of the the hike and frontiers um, charge to us it does not represent the largest school budget that we deal with which is the Conway grammar school so mm -hmm. relative to the total budget it is not as much as it might as uh, it it can seem. It's easy for you to say when you get to stand up and say, "And now for the school budget, Phil Cantor." <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I start off with a with a kind of an executive summary with projected total possible revenues and expenses. Um, this is slightly different from the revenue page that appears further on on pages sixteen and seventeen uh, because this is this is based on the levy limit. And... Um, hey, Roy, we're just starting. Hi. Yeah, so on the very first page... Page one. Okay. How are um, you doing? Okay. The, uh, I say total possible revenue because the, this includes the estimated levy limit. Now, we're not going to be going up to the levy limit, mm -hmm. so we, we actually will not have this much revenue, but we could have this much revenue so if you look at then at the expenses, um, the total expenses uh, so far are um, about $430,000 less than the total possible revenue, mm -hmm. meaning our anticipated excess levy capacity is $429,000, which well, is we in good shape. a lot healthier yes. than it's been in the last couple of years. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Now, that's an estimate. We don't know what it is. I made another estimate a while ago that was uh, about two hundred and thirty thousand dollars, but it's still a, uh, a very healthy uh, excess levy capacity. I then do a, a treatment on free cash. You've, the select board has seen a little bit of that before. Um, it details what our free cash is made out of because I think there's some uh, lack of clarity about all the things that go into free cash, mm -hmm. and of course. Um, unspent money from the previous year is only part of it. So I wanted to make sure that people knew exactly why we have so much uh, free cash this year. And so I, I gave that in detail. Uh, and then I have a, a, a discussion of free cash and I show a chart uh, for over the past, uh, I guess, 11 years, mm -hmm. um, what the free cash is, has been like. Um, for, for our, Town. Uh, the last paragraph on page three 
if we took the the DOR suggested target for free cash of three to five percent of the town's budget, um, if you take our budget is six and a half million, um, which you know it, it's it's going to be more like seven million, but it wasn't that long ago that it was six million. So just thinking of six point five, thinking between. 200,000, 325,000, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. So 438 is over the amount that's recommended, but some of that has to do with one-term revenues that we're not going to get again. Sure. So um, you can see here that would be... Um, so we're like at 6%. It, it, it well, would be... 5.68. Yeah. Though it is? Yeah. 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 You know, if we had $300,000, you can see where that line is. And for the three years previous, we've been we've been substantially under that so we're I think we're coming back into free cash health now um, on page four I've set something uh, in a box and made it bold because I think it's important um, I think our, our annual appropriation for capital stabilization should be 150,000 now not 125 mm -hmm. um, without a plan from the capital improvements planning committee it's a little bit difficult to yeah know exactly how much that should be but uh, it certainly needs to be more than the 125 we've been putting in uh, I have a little bit of a discussion about retiree health care benefits um, are you open to amend uh, to edit to edits on this this is it um, but whatever we uh, yeah. do in the future you know that that OPEB sentence where you give the OPEB amount that's our total OPEB liability Right, but that's kind of like a fake liability because it's well, never it's never I, like a lump sum that you're asked to pay, and, and, and I, it's I, insane. You can, right, you can, I yes, can't yes, stand yes. this. Yeah, but those are the rules. Of course, yeah, it's just right. insane. Okay. And um, I uh, I discuss it and I say how um, I believe it should be treated in the town, mm -hmm. which is probably pretty close to what you think. <laughs> so uh, then there's a discussion of excess levy capacity. Um, Projected revenues and the problems with getting those and projected expenses. On page six, I go through the four general categories which the state uses to categorize government spending. General government, public safety, public works, and education, health, and human services. Um, this is a, just an introduction to those. Talk about capital items, um, the committee, the stabilization funds. Um, three possible future capital projects on pages eight and nine. I bring people uh, up to date on uh, some of the uh, items that we spent money on last year on page nine, notes on selected FY19 special articles. <coughs> A few notes on significant budgetary items and trends. Uh, and again, a box about our debt saying we actually should have more debt in order to be considered a community that's investing in its future. What um, page is that? That's on ten, page ten. 10, the yeah. box on the top of page 10. And I've added a new section this year on the tax rate. So this is entirely new. Um, I'm pleased to have gotten some figures on it. And uh, so I show the, the last five years of the average single family tax bill from Conway, which was all I could get from the uh, uh, DOR's gateway um, site. And then I compare that with a statewide median residential single family tax bill. And note that uh, in 2015, we were paying uh, $170 more than the statewide median, and now we're only paying $48 more. Right. So we're Approach where, where ours is coming down relative to the statewide medium, which I think is a healthy trend. So then, alphabetically and by average single family tax bill, you can see on page 11 that Conway is the third highest average single family tax bill. That was just for 19, uh, for 2017. Um, average. And I, uh, so it's average. This isn't median, it's yeah. the average of the tax bills. Yes, yeah, so this one's median. Median? Uh, on, on page 10 is definitely median. And oh, okay. page 11, I believe, will average, be average. average. It, it's, from a different, it's from a different page on the DRO website. Okay. Uh, but I'm not sure. I can check that out. Um, 
I talked a little bit about grants received or in operation. Um, tiny little bit about education, something about payroll, something about health care where I show uh, trends in that. We're actually going down this year. Um, it has less to do with the cost of health care than the, than the participation. A um, little bit about that we have financial policies and then the budget process, explaining how the budget process works. Um, <coughs> leading up to today, February 25th. Oh, no, wait. Oh that, that was when I was supposed to have the preliminary budget <laughs> completed and distributed, but um, because I didn't get the school figures till last week, I was unable to uh, do that today. And then uh, you can see the warrant is slated to close next week. Um, and after that, it's you know it's tweaking. You know, um, how do we want to do this? How do we want to do that? Mm -hmm. And a, uh, a schedule that allows legal review, um, the select board to sign the warrant. We have to get it to the printer. We have to give the printer enough time to print it and get it to the distributor. We have to give the distributor enough time to distribute it, and then people get it two weeks before the town meeting. So that's why the warrant's closing and it's being tweaked and signed as early as it is, is because of all that logistics that goes into getting it out to everybody. So at our next meeting, we're closing the warrant. Yeah. Yes. That's the schedule. Um, then there's a section on revenues in which they're covered in um, in detail on pages 16 and 17. <coughs> Expenses start on page 18, uh, and I I uh, give some text about all the things that have been proposed. Um, and capital expenses and other financial warrant articles. There are two charts here. First, it starts on page 19, and it's projected 2019 <laughs> special articles by department. And then there is the chart that starts on the top of page 21 is by source of funds. Mm -hmm. So they add up to the same number, which is uh, which is good. It, it's very good. It's, uh, <laughs> it's it's not really as easy as it seems sometimes because numbers change, and then then you have to make sure they're they're all consistent. So, uh, two ways of looking at the items that are proposed for the warrant. Um, <clears throat> page twenty-two has an analysis of our operating expenses over the last eight years, seven years. Mm -hmm. And finally, on page 23, uh, we get to the actual budget. Um, uh, again, I, I sort of repeat the, the four categories with their totals. Mm -hmm. um, and th This is a note that gets repeated uh, in here in case somebody just dips into it. Uh, please note that FY 2018 expenses are generally not available in the categories below due to a change in the accounting software. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have the total, but we don't have the detail by the same sub-account number. Mm -hmm. So it's been difficult um, getting those two in sync. Um, so uh, these are just all the budgets that we've already seen and some of the ones you haven't because they were level funded or were very small. Uh, so that starts, um, general government includes all of the finance, all of the committees. <coughs> um, and the Franklin Regional Council of Governments as a regional service. And public safety is on page 36, which is police, fire, ambulance, emergency management, animal control officer, and tree warden, are all considered public safety. Uh, public works is highway and building maintenance. Buildings includes grounds. Page 39. Uh, uh, yeah, 39, 40, 41, and finally, education, public health, and human services. And there's a lot of numbers on the schools there. The ones in italics are um, not yet finalized. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and on page 43, I did a short analysis of charter schools. Um, we have 11 students. <laughs> and and I, I came out with a, a slightly different percentage for the rise in, in yeah. the 10.77. Yeah. And I'm not sure why. I think that's because um, my assessment for FY 2019 is from the estimated assessment, uh, which is clearly labeled, but um, it's not the final assessment. So uh, the estimated assessment was probably somewhat higher. So the actual assessment was lower, so the change to this year was greater, which is why it's 12.06% instead of 10.77. But mm -hmm. I, I do say under that column that that was the, the estimated amount. Um, if I had another week, I could come up with figures that actually match the percentages that we had, but um, I really wanted to get this out tonight so that people can start working with it. And, you know, if I just explain things like that, then everybody's clear what the difference is. So for, uh, for charter schools, we have uh, 11 students attending Four Rivers, seven attending Pioneer Valley Performing Arts, and two attending the Chinese Immersion Charter School. So that's a total of 20 students, uh, high school students going, uh, uh, middle high school students going from Conway to charter schools. Um, and then just uh, the rest of that section is Board of Health and Council on Aging and Veteran Services. Uh, at the very end, page 46, I include an organizational <coughs> chart for the town, um, which is something that's uh, recommended by the Government Finance Officers Association, mm -hmm. and also a projected Article 2, which does not include any wage rise. Here, in the next to uh, the right hand most column, there are items in italics. Those are ones which are just carried over from the year before, more or less. There's a, there are some differences which are you can check back into the into the into the weeds earlier to see where those differences are, mm -hmm. um, but they are essentially um, meant to be level funded, uh, except for the board of health and the town clerk. They are the um, as elected officials. They have chosen to write in their own 2.5 percent increase uh, as their proposed budget. Um, there is also a discussion in a couple of places what the, uh, if there were a, a, a town-wide staff pay raise, uh, it's something like, something just short of uh, 15,000 for a 2.5 percent, mm -hmm. something like 19,000 for a 3 percent, and something like <coughs> 11 or 12 for a 2 point, oh yeah. Uh, 2.0 percent. The 2.5 would be 14,566. Um, that's what page not you included. What page you on now? Uh, that I, I got that from the first page. There's somewhere else that it gives all three. Um, <coughs> I should actually do general government, uh, which I don't see. Oh yeah, there on page 24, the last line on page 24 talks about the different figures for what um, the different pay rises would, would add to this figure, the draft Article 2, at the end. Right, um, right now, um, without that, uh, whatever, either um, 14.5 or 17.5 or 11.5, um, uh, the budget would be going up $193,593,000 500, $193, from last year, which is a 3.21% increase down, I would say, considerably from the 4.74% increase last year, which is very similar to the 4.85% increase the year before that. So the trend line is definitely good for that. And that's why I say it's good news despite the... Uh, the increase in the frontier budget. Uh, 
that hundred and thirty three thousand dollars there is uh, is a hard it's a tough nut to crack but um, because other yeah. things went down, especially technical schools, basically, we're able to absorb take, it. You take the schools out of there. Our our budget increase for the town is about thirty thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Yeah, and there's a there's a uh, a clearer analysis of that um, in it's the uh, presentation I was given. In the expense presentation given last Thursday says that Conway's share of the front the original school budget is going up by one hundred forty eight thousand. <coughs> bucks has to be changed. In your time, you say 133. Yes, I so, do. Uh, and that may. I, I'll, I'll check the FY 19 figure and see if that's the actual or the estimated. That should be the actual. Because I mean, <coughs> I'm calculating all of that from from these numbers themselves. Uh, there's also the. Uh, you might also have the Excel sheet. Yeah which is where I did all of the basic calculations mm -hmm. and then brought them into the, the Word document. Right. Um, so if those numbers need to change, um, please let me know. Well, it's it's yes. an awful lot to, to pull together. Yeah, um, thank you. In a short time, too. Thank well, you. Well, very okay. helpful. Yeah. Were you going to say something about that number, Alan, or were you just commenting on it? Well, you know, it being was. about the increase, but also you're saying that uh, you're, you're banking on $20,000 $20, of new revenue growth, but I think the town is saying, the assessor is saying it could be higher than that. By the uh, it's going to be at least 72000 Yeah, so, I mean, we have some, in other words, I'm just anticipating the questions at the town was, what's the impact of our foundation calculation change from the frontier regional school and we should be able to offset uh, some of that by uh, new growth. And those are the well, new growth is the reason for it. Right, that's the right. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Somewhat, but I mean, it's not completely offset because then I say, well, well then why, why is our tax bill going to go up or not? So I mean, I'm just anticipating. Right, that well, um, underestimating new growth <coughs> is one of the main uh, ways to generate free cash for the following year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we don't really need. Um, I mean, you, you, you can see my, my proposed sources for the, right. the various items. Article 2 is, is raise and appropriate. Yep. So it, it's, it's not like we can apply mm -hmm. the new growth yep. um, directly to Article 2, but it, it does play its part in the budget. Mm -hmm. And all that means is that our free cash would be more last year than it would be if, if these numbers held yep. true. This is, this is always a preliminary budget just to get the big picture out so people yeah. can see where we have money, where we don't have money, all of that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And proposed funding sources for the money items in, which I've also already presented, mm -hmm. proposed funding sources for the money items mm -hmm. in the warrant mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, John, I took a look at those numbers too, and it wasn't just the towns up 30, the grammar schools up 30. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for the readjustment of the foundation baseline budget for the school frontier for us would be up thirty. Yeah. So yeah. It, yeah. if it if it wasn't for that, um, yeah. it would be a, a really copacetic budget. Uh, the, be great. The, the fact is that you just get a number spit out in a cherry sheet from the state, and it says you owe you owe the other three towns that you have a regional school with a hundred grand. Yeah. Is just mind boggling to me. Um, I would think that, that would probably people would want to dwell on that a little bit in the town meetings. So. And uh, you know, I, I, yeah. I well, not yeah, that's what he's looking for. But that, yeah, that's just yeah. they're they're working on the foundation, the, the formula for the foundation yeah. budget and, right. and the chapter seventy funding. Uh, you know, uh, governor let us down it's so the, hard. It's the same. It's the same thing every year. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, every year we're working on those formulas. We're working on chapter seventy funding. Transportation, job is the yeah. reimbursement. Transportation uh, was the whole budget increase for Frontier. The whole yeah. thing. Yeah. It, can, you, can somebody refresh uh, my memory again how the charter schools are working? Because that adds up to about 260000 cost to educate the kids. Mm -hmm. how, does that all come from us? No. No. It comes out of the school budget. Comes out, out of, of the Chapter 70. Out of everything. It's, it's all it, part it, of it. It's, t it's a charge it on our charity. Before we can. Right. I, I got you. But in voting for our school, you're voting for the charter schools as well. So you put all of the charter school costs together, we're paying one-sixth of that because that's our share. Okay. Deerfield's paying half of that because that's their share. 
Okay. <clears throat> and the kids coming in on school choice, to the grammar school anyway, right. or to the regional school, right? what kind of money follows them? Yeah. That that payment has not been increased since 1977. It's five, five, five grand. Five thousand. That makes sense though. And, and well, that, at the grammar school, why does it make sense? Or that... No, because the school school. choice is yeah. looked at as a, it's about five, five, five grand. have a couple grammar, empty yeah. seats. Yeah, school choice is not like yeah. charter schools. No. <clears throat> and the losing district, are they? No, the losing district has to fund the school without. Yeah. Well, we'll that's, go without the that's the argument yeah. against increasing the cho the choice uh, thing because the sending towns have to pay that money. So for every kid that Greenfield, for instance, sends a lot of kids mm -hmm. to Conley Grammar and to Frontier, mm -hmm. um, and the town of Greenfield pays five thousand for each of those kids to the town of Conway, whatever. Okay. And so if yeah, if, if well, we if, if the state were to vote to increase that reimbursement, it'd be the town of Greenfield that, that and right. and that's right. they're, well, they're the one they can least right. afford to do that. Um, right. Well, maybe we can least afford to do that. Right. Okay. Your second. Um, it's, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I would think that also in the town meeting, people want to ask why there's there was like an itemization for the increase in the free cash too. Town, I think. There's some asset sales and things, but there's some explanation that goes out with the. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I mean, would, would be helpful. Oh, okay, the, to include this. I mean, it's good news, but I mean, people might ask why. Well, Podcast. Yeah, I mean that's why I included yeah, yeah, in this don't budget. Get, don't get too far into the weeds. I think maybe just just putting the. Um, well, the graph. The chart. Store the chart. Uh, um, mm -hmm. You know, th th there's there's any amount of this that could be useful to people. I. Uh, it, it is now on the web. Yep. People can download this document and look at whatever part of it they well, want. Well, I like your idea. If there's a couple everybody's big, going to be interested big in pieces yeah. of it, it. it could be, yeah. you know, earmarked. But I'm just the, thinking some of the big explain. questions that will be asked would be, what's the average cost to educate the 135 students that were projected to be enrolled at Conway Grammar School for this mm -hmm. coming year? It's $14,535 per student. I don't know if it is mm -hmm. to a regional school. I think I'll figure out a calculation on March 21st. When yeah, they have that. Um, when it's all when the budget is finalized. Those kind of things, board and brush Yeah. To, to me, to me, like the, w the, the one thing that I've heard about is the, the pickup truck, the, the highway garage pickup truck, uh, the, the highway. And, and the you values. know, there's people got their knives out for that one. Oh. And, and I think, you know, <laughs> you, yeah, you know, that when, when you when, when you heard what, it, what the way that that went down, I, I thought that was that's. I don't know if there's a word for budgetary euthanasia, like budgetary mercy killing, but um, we would do them a favor to get rid of that thing. I think, but um, just make it a single cab truck. So uh, the, the, you know, people when people heard that that he, well, aluminum, what 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 do you want? extra aluminum rims for the town truck because the resale value is whatever he was talking about that no. yeah. so yeah, I, I think, think that yeah, that question would be what, what, what's the potential thank increase you thank you, thank you Tom yeah, very very yeah. uh, this is all, this all is, on the website now yeah yes okay. wow. the other thing would be this we calculate somehow to figure out what the potential for our, our increase in our property tax rate would be. Yeah, obviously we're not going to know but this that's worksheet that's, that's on this sheet on, this worksheet is that on is on this worksheet for what February? I have it from February 25th. <laughs> you have anything March first which shows, says at the bottom. Which shows this? I get last one. I got one of these worksheets. That you got. Um, no, Lisa. Because um, it has a total budget increase of by one hundred six hundred two thousand seven hundred. Yeah, no, no, we're we're we're, we're yeah. updated from that. All right. Alan, Alan's is from is from February. Yeah, February. The February ones that you gave, fourth. The ones that you gave this is them today. that came in. Oh, mine says March first, right down here. Yeah, it says March fourth. It, it it should say March fourth. Oh, all right. No, nope. March fourth. Did, did, did you did you get what I I handed you something when you came in? It says March fourth on the front page, and that says March first. Um, but it still has the right figures. Okay. So we'll find email this is this is what I handed okay. out at the beginning. Thank you. And that <coughs> it's more sort of, but the, the, the figures are, are generally the same. Okay. Um, and that and this is projecting 
Um, and again, it's it's difficult to to present a number sure. like this because we won't actually know what this is until next fall. Yeah. Uh, so this is mm -hmm. this is nine months <coughs> early. Right. Um, but this is projecting um, an FY 2020 tax rate of eighteen dollars and five cents, which would be down forty five yeah. cents yeah. Mm -hmm. from this year. Yeah. Um, Lee and I both cannot believe that number. We both think something's wrong somewhere, but we can't. We can't see where anything's wrong. <laughs> okay. So, so that's. Um, that's the exact feeling I have. That's where we are all the time. <laughs> yeah. Especially about school budget. I mean, part of it could be that we got an extra sixty-four thousand dollars from the state this year from Chapter Seventy and Ninety money, right? Total. <coughs> chapter Ninety money has actually gone down. I thought the state for, gave an extra nine of us for fifty-three thousand and then eleven thousand for Chapter Seventy. Way yeah. no. okay. if, it's, if it's stable uh, year on year, I mean, that's, that's, that's excellent. Thank you. The presentation is very helpful. Okay. okay. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. Any other You're questions welcome. for Tom on his presentation? No. Uh, put it on the agenda for next week so that I can read it. The 45 pages and <laughs> something yeah. intelligent mm -hmm. because it's difficult for me to do that on the spot. Well, it's 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 my best figure so far. Uh, check check it against this, which is um, the Excel sheet that informs everything else. What um, time is the? Uh, that's Article Two. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. These are the uh, town. Those are the special articles. So I like this thing. There's revenue figures over here. The money articles over there. There's expenses. There's the non-tax revenue over there. So that leaves that much to be raised by taxes. And you divide that into the taxable base to get your tax raise. So it's it's pretty straightforward. We approve it. So we went from here to here because it came from other accounts. We're cut off. Individual yeah. numbers in here Thank you for coming. Estimated from last year. <laughs> and, as I said, so we're so come here all week. It's been, that's true. That's been actually, I think, more is uh, a general Who's trend. Up there? Like we've that, got, uh, we've got poll for, hearings next. You know, so you can put out a revised version last year. More? So I'm, I, okay. I can put out a revised because, uh, because And I certainly don't propose okay. funding the entire project. Right. <laughs> right. No. Is, and I is say why? Well, first coming for the poll hearing. So. I don't why see it yet. Why? Yeah, there, you missed one. There, there's a whole bunch of other things. Right. That's why expenses are blanked because of the accounting. We don't. I don't. We can't match what we have to what we had. I mean, Joe's here, but but he's not for this member for this. Yeah. Because there's other accounts that are on here, right? This wasn't just. An arbitrary jump for ten thousand. Well, that might have eight thousand. Yeah, because you took it out of another account. Also. Oh, that's the phone. The phone and the phone. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's in the text. That's not in the text. That was last year. They can look it up. They can look up last year's budget. Roy, you've got uh, you've got a jacket. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, Thank you, guys. Member sources is it here. Is anyone coming? Yes. You want to just? Yeah, should be. Unless he's across the street. In which case, Jenny will send him over here. Okay. Or tell him to sit in the corner. Yeah, right. Um, well, I mean, we can wait a moment, but they're up next. Yeah. Well, can we, can we go there? Can you just hit um, 908 and see if Jimmy picks up and see if anybody from Eversource is over there? I believe I originally told them it would be over there, and then I wrote them and said, no, it's actually going to be over here. Okay. Joe, how are you doing? Okay, John, how are you? Good, good. Hi. Hi. Uh, the end. Maybe he's at the end. Yeah, that's a good point. He could be. We could go there. We, yeah. 
There you go. Right? Soon. <laughs> Hi, this is Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Uh, it's Lisa. Is anybody over there from Eversource? No? Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> It's just like real life, waiting for Eversource to show up. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, but that's okay. But it's the Eversource person that we're that we're in. Hi. Oh, okay. They're not from Eversource. Don't know. No. No. Yeah, yeah, okay. Fine, thank you. You can get some more tears. I think they're just coming to support more of our application too. Um, right. Moral support okay, kind of thing. Gotta go. Bye. I think we originally told you the meeting was over there. Originally, it was, it was scheduled for over there. Right. And so, but the town clock is got scheduled for over there. So they're setting that up over there. But when we have this many people, it's good to have it over there. Hey, how are you? Okay. <clears throat> well, we should. So the fire sheet's not here. Yeah. Is this, can, we, uh, can we pull this chair over and so somebody sure. can actually sit at the table? All right, we'll go on to the next item on the agenda. Yeah. <coughs> John Moore and Lisa Gustafson, mm -hmm. proposed marijuana establishment. Okay. <laughs> Come on up. You're up. Hot seat, John. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. How Thanks you for being here. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Phil. Lisa, how are you? Hi, nice to meet you. Hi again. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> See, it didn't quite make the cut. The TV. It didn't make it. No. <laughs> the battery went bad. Yeah. No, it, if Dan had been there recording it, it would have been fun. <laughs> he got me instead. Don't give him the camera. <laughs> um, <laughs> See if anybody's here for the poll here. Just, just to <laughs> see. <laughs> you mean in back? Yeah. These these folks. Well, Joe is, but no. <laughs> is we're here for the poll here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, Shoot. Yeah. Well, usually every source. Every source is in here. Yeah. Usually yeah. every source is pretty so full on those the, things. We're delaying it and <laughs> yeah. going to the next agenda item. Oh, I see. Maybe they'll be here by the time we. But if they don't come, so you know, we have any questions uh, after. I think John. I think if they don't come, we go ahead anyway. Uh, we can we can do that. Uh, I'd rather have them here, though. Well, yeah, but we'll, well, we maybe we won't be able to make a decision unless they're here. Well, we'll move so. to the next item. Yeah, and and then when they show up, we'll get them. All right, Tom, what do we got here? We have John Moore and Lisa Gustafson. Okay. <clears throat> so good evening. Good evening. Um, I prepared a packet. This should be our complete packet according to the new policy. Uh, so I'd like to walk through it with you and confirm that there's nothing missing. So I'll use the um, policy as my structure. And um, after I walk through the contents of this uh, package, uh, John um, would like a little time to talk about um, larger issues, larger big picture issues. But I'm dealing with the specifics. If there's anything you see that's missing, I'll take some notes and get it to the uh, select board. All right, um, according to the Town of Conway's uh, January 29th policy, um, applicants <coughs> who are applying for a uh, license for marijuana establishments must hold a community outreach meeting. Um, so we held a community outreach meeting on Friday and I have summarized the community outreach meeting in a seven page document. 
five page document entitled Summary of the Community Outreach Meeting. And to get everyone oriented, um, the Google Earth image on the front of our packets is our property located at 40 Waitley Glen Road. Waitley mm -hmm. Glen Road is off of Roaring Brook Road. Our, our house is on the left um, next to the pond. And what we are talking about tonight is a proposal to um, create a cultivation site. We call it cultivation site number one, um, which is circled in the image. The, the site is will be surrounded by forest. So I'll keep that image out here. Um, you may it may be helpful as we go along. Um, would you like me to summarize our outreach meeting? Please. All right. Um, our outreach meeting was held on March 1st, and the meeting was held in the general public room. It began at 7.30 on Friday and concluded at uh, approximately 9. Uh, according to the Cannabis Control Commission's uh, regulations, a public notice was published in the Greenfield Recorder. A notice was sent to the Conway Town Clerk, the Town Administrator, the Planning Board, the Board of Health, the Conway Select Board, and the Conway Police Department. Mm -hmm. We contacted Franklin County Action TV uh, regarding our meeting, asking them if they would be able to film it. And we also contacted the abutters of our proposed address. Our abutters are defined as uh, owners of land within 300 feet of any property line on our mm -hmm. parcel. According to the Franklin County Action TV, the recording of the it's meeting just, just, should be it's available. Just, just access. Oh, yeah, it's access. Franklin yeah. County Access TV. Front Frontier Community, Community Action. Action. I have access. it all wrong. Oh, okay. Okay. Two, two board, two board, board FCAT, members FCAT, here. FCAT's Watch out. Fine. <laughs> FCAT's fine. FCAT. All of that guy. The FCAT. No. The meeting would. Uh, the recording would be available on their YouTube channel within three to five days of the meeting. But it won't be because the recording didn't work. Sorry. But it's not, I mean, it doesn't, it's not a legal requirement. I'm just no. sad that it's not going to be there. Excuse me, that what's not going to be there? Uh, um, I, I borrowed a camera from FCAT to record the community access, yeah. the community yeah, meeting. Yeah, that's what Chris had told me. And it, he's not a professional it camera didn't work. man. Understood. That, ex that explains this morning. Okay. Uh -huh. What happened this morning? I couldn't find it. Well, it wouldn't be there. I didn't even take oh, the camera okay. back gotcha. to FCAT until around noon today. Uh, but then they have to process it. Mm -hmm. it's, you're not, it's, and we, we don't have any live access down to FCAT. We more like a sneaker net. You know, we drive down the a recording and, <laughs> and they copy it to their server after editing it. All right. So. The meeting, as I mentioned, um, was scheduled to start at 7.30. It began at 7.35. Approximately 16 individuals were in attendance. Mm -hmm. We began the meeting with introductions of ourselves, and then we moved on to basic housekeeping items. And then we started in on um, what we thought would be helpful for the discussion purposes of brief discussion, true or false, dispelling myths. And we walk through those uh, seven bulleted items summarized here in the document, uh, true or false, and a, a, a bit of background and question and answer. Uh, was it really happening at that point? Then uh, the bulk of the presentation that we provided for the audience was what I'm calling essential information. Uh, this is information that the select board requires in their policy, as well as uh, information that the CCC requires any licensed app applicant for a license to provide during a community outreach meeting. I will um, talk about the main categories and if you'd like me to pause and explain it, I'd be happy to. So we talked about the type of proposed establishment. We're proposing a craft marijuana cooperative. We talked about our location. Uh, we're proposing to locate this on our farm or in Brook. Could, could, could you explain to us the meaning of uh, craft marijuana cooperative? Um, sure. Okay. Um, there are some basic criteria for 
individuals interested in applying for a craft marijuana cooperative, you must be a resident of the Commonwealth. You must, any one person in the cooperative must um, have filed Schedule F on the federal tax returns. Uh, the craft marijuana cooperative must be organized in a specific entity. We are organized as a limited liability company, LLC. And craft, co craft marijuana cooperatives um, are only allowed to have wholesale sales to licensed marijuana establishments. Craft marijuana cooperatives are not allowed to sell to customers. No retail sales. Right. I can read the definition from the Cannabis Control Commission, which mm -hmm. may expand on those aspects of the, of the entity. A craft marijuana cooperative means a marijuana cultivator comprised of residents of the Commonwealth and organized as a limited liability company, limited liability partnership, or a cooperative corporation under the laws of the Commonwealth. A cooperative is licensed to cultivate, obtain, manufacture, process, package, and brand cannabis or marijuana products to transport marijuana to marijuana establishments, but not to customers. Okay, so it's primarily um, cultivation, manufacture, transport, wholesaling. Correct. From your establishment to a retailer somewhere? To an established marijuana establishment, to okay. a licensed <coughs> marijuana establishment. Which so there would be no additional traffic of people coming to your establishment? Uh, Correct. <coughs> Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, sorry, just to clarify, this is cultivation or cultivation and manufacturing? It's all together. It was designed for, um, there's three different, two specific design for farmers, and one of them being this craft marijuana cooperative. Which, which includes but it's cultivation and not manufacturing. Is, it's is, it's is, all of it combined. Except for retail. Okay. Correct. Everything okay. but retail. They're trying to lump it all in there so farmers have that okay. shot. So they don't have to keep going for all different licenses. Yeah. So, trying to make it equitable under the guidelines. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that came up in the meeting that 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 that, that I think is good to know, um, you know, they're gonna, they're going to grow a crop, they're going to harvest the crop, they're going to dry the crop, they're going to send the crop to a wholesaler and they'll be done yeah you know, uh, unless there's a, another manufacturing step involved no in what they're doing no that's not none. in our plans our plans are and we have we're negotiating right now for a supply agreement to take it all right. one shot one trip our plan so you're takes not up planning our, to do uh, manufacturing we're not planning that no okay uh, i'm our, sorry i thought that nope. was the question i asked no nope, it wasn't yes <laughs> Okay. It may well, be I said legal. it's included it in our be, license. It may be legal me, under the license. In your license. So you could. It's legal. Yes, we could but do. But it's not in your plan. Absolutely okay. not. We don't have plans for that. The machinery to do any of that is so prohibitive. Mm. It's not something that farmers can, you know, this farmer can do. Mm -hmm. So. But that feels to me like a piece that's important, you know, so for us. Thank you so much. It so absolutely so is. Yeah, we were going to get to that in a little mm -hmm. bit, but thank you. Oh, okay. All right, um, continuing on, uh, the location of our proposed establishment, as I mentioned, is um, on 40 Waitley Glen Road. Um, that is our mailing address. Um, it's actually, the, the access route can be from both 40 Waitley Glen Road and uh, further down on Roanbrook Road. We do not anticipate accessing the site off of Roanbrook Road. Our property is approximately 60 acres, and the proposed- Can I just give that location? Sure. Or, um, There's a map right in front of right. the blue packet. Uh -huh. So first of all, I, I, um, this is to sort of not just to you, but to anybody else that's thinking about doing what you're thinking about doing, just to come to the select board first before you do your public meeting. Um, this, the, uh, for, if for no other reason that when you put two or more select board members in a room, you have a select board quorum, mm -hmm. And the open meeting law says that we can't talk about things in a with um, that that are bound to be uh, that that are going to be coming up for a vote later on. So like you had that public meeting, I knew he was going. That kind of meant that I couldn't go, or that it would would have been potentially hazardous for an open meeting violation for me to go and then ask questions or whatever. So 
I kind of they wouldn't have fucked you. Well, <laughs> um, but but still, but still, it's like it's like one of those things that um, it's since the select board approves these things, you should come to the select board first, just so that we can have a discussion like this um, discussion. Right, and, and no, but right, no, that's not our policy. <laughs> yeah. No. No. It's not? no. 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 They could. Our but, policy. I know. I know they can. Is that the first thing that they do is do that. Um, in order for the select board to consider negotiating them. So in order for the select board to consider anything, they already have to have gone through the outreach meeting. Um, and then what they bring to us is the summary and the copy of the application and the draft host agreement. So we want right. them to. So that, that was a long way winded yeah. introduction to the, by, to, to the question that I wanted to ask, um, which was like, um, you you border you border the Deerfield Water District the, the whole Waitley Glen from Waitley Glen bottom of Waitley Glen Road all the way up is your neighbor all that well right? it's at both South Deerfield water supply and Coles and, and the, the residents and the Scots and Waitley so so um, why why uh, why if, why a field out in the middle of the woods. Instead of right next to your house. Can we answer that when we get through the required stuff? And I'll get to all that because I'm more the technical person. She's trying to get through the required stuff right now. Um, okay. Is that possible, Phil? Sure. Thanks. Appreciate it. I just don't want to throw her off of her timing. You know? <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, so our location is uh, the address is 40 Waitley Glen Road. The area of the proposed cultivation is approximately three acres. Um, this circle guesstimates, estimates the size of that opening, but it's not uh, surveyed, obviously. We are not proposing any new structures other than our, the structures that are currently on the site. And this is a terrible black and white photo in my handout. Sorry, so I made a, a color copy. Um, Yours is real dark, so John. Sorry. Moving on to other uh, items that we were asked to address um, zoning requirements. The proposed location is located in the Rural Residential Agricultural District here in Conway, according to the 2013 zoning map. As proposed, this establishment is allowed with no deviation under Town of Conway Protective Zoning Bylaws, Article 11. A zoning at amendment is not required for the establishment as proposed. However, a special permit is required by the Planning Board for all establishments. Mm -hmm. Other required permits. The Town of Conway requires an annual marijuana operating permit issued by the Conway Board of Health. This annual operating permit cannot be issued until the CCC issues a current marijuana established license to the entity Roaring mm -hmm. Glen Farms LLC. I, I neglected to mention that. So we live on Roaring Glen Farm. Our entity is Roaring Glen Farms LLC. Local licensing regulation requirement for all businesses operating in the town of Conway. Um, they are required to ha hold a local business license. The business certificate is, is uh, required by Conway. Mm -hmm. Roaring Glen Farms LLC has a certified business certificate effective 1018 to 102022. Regarding local Board of Health regulation I mentioned earlier, the town of Conway requires an annual marijuana operating permit. This expires at the end of every calendar year. It's issued by the Board of Health, and as we said, it cannot yet it cannot be issued until a CC the CCC issues a uh, license. Five hundred foot buffer zone requirement. The proposed location complies with the five hundred foot buffer zone from existing public or private school buildings. In addition, this proposed location complies with all local bylaws and ordinance concerning buffer zones. What is the establishment's plan to prevent diversion to minors? There will be a 24-hour presence at the outdoor cultivation site when the crop presents a hazard or has economic value. The establishment will utilize locked and secure storage and curing containers during processing. The what, do you, what, do you, what do you mean by 24-hour presence? <coughs> you want to answer that? 
just exactly what it says, John. We're, we plan to have 24-hour presence there when it's of any economic value, which is the last approximately six weeks of its life. Okay. Uh, before so you have 24-hour security, basically. Exactly. Okay. Someone there. I, I'm a I'm a vet. I'm a member of two different vet organizations. Mm -hmm. We're going to strive to hire vets who have already reached out to us. Okay. Uh, people are pretty familiar with that type of you know that type of protocol. So sure. That's what we're looking for. Okay. All right, the next item um, is a combination of a requirement that the select board was interested in us addressing as well as the CCC, and this is the neighborhood and the environment. Uh, we're presenting the proposed location will not constitute, constitute a nuisance in the community because of the following. The proposal is an outdoor crop with no lighting requirements. The location is out of line of sight of roadways and neighbors. Visual visual um, nuisance. The prevailing winds are northwesterly into over a thousand acres of forested lands adjacent to the farm, dealing with odor. The location of cultivation is at least 1,000 feet from the closest residence, again dealing with odor. The cultivation and harvesting process will generate no atypical sound or light pollution, noise and light. The cultivation, harvesting, and sales processes are anticipated to generate no additional traffic beyond normal agricultural traffic volume. Dealing with uh, lighting, sight, odor, noise, and traffic. Next in the summary, um, I write about the plan for positive community impact. Uh, we talked in our meeting about the annual community impact payment, the CIP, which we have included in our proposed draft community host agreement, which we will be delivering to the select board today. And we are in that agreement, we're offering to make an annual CIP <coughs> payment in accordance with the terms found in the sign HCA, if applicable. In addition, the company shall use good faith efforts in a legal and non-discriminatory discriminatory manner to give priority to hire local qualified residents with additional priority given to women, veterans, and, and or farmers. Finally, in terms of a plan for positive community impact, we shall make every effort in a legal and non-discriminatory manner to give priority to local businesses, suppliers, contractors, builders, and or vendors in the provision of goods and services called for in the construction, maintenance, and continued operation of the establishment as needed. The meeting then, our part of the meeting then concluded and we opened the floor to questions and answers. Um, I hope that the recording would be available. Um, Me too. <laughs> I have some <coughs> fantastic notes. Um, uh, so, uh, in the attendance at the meeting, we had an abutter, a non-abutting neighbor, a select board member, a planning board member, a board of health member, a representative of the South Deerfield Water District, and several Conway residents. The discussion lasted for about an hour, and we believe we ended the meeting having satisfactorily answered questions brought forth by the audience. However, in the case that members of the audience did not feel comfortable asking specific questions in the group, we offered attendees to contact us by email or phone with any questions that they would feel more comfortable asking us privately. To date, one attendee has contacted us and has stated her support of our project. Great. Um, so in, in your packet, along with the summary of a community outreach meeting, I included um, some guidance documents that the CCC has issued. Um, it's entitled Guidance. Mm -hmm. um, where is it? Um, guidance on guidance for municipalities and guidance on municipal equity. By having the community outreach meeting, we feel that um, we have a complete packet of, of our license application, of our proposal, and that complete application is required by the select board to, for us to provide. 
um, that is item 2B. So item 2A is a summary of the community outreach meeting and item 2B is a copy of a draft license application to the Cannabis Control Commission. And that document um, is seven pages with approximately seven more <coughs> attachments. Would you like me to go over that with for the board or would you like? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. A little shell shot. What's important here? <laughs> no. yeah. um, well, this has a lot of very private and confidential information, so if it's acceptable to the board, I'd rather not. Okay. It is now a public document. Mm. You have distributed it at a public meeting. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. If you'd like to get them back, you can ask for them back. And well, give us I, I, we could not. not have we could not possibly um, complete <laughs> the requirement <laughs> of the select board <laughs> without including this information. So this is a document you you're supposed to give to us. Yes. Okay. Well, by by your policy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We didn't ask you to sign a non-compete, non-disclose. No, no. Yeah. <clears throat> can't do that. I mean, we can't sign a non-compete. <laughs> um, so, now the last item for presentation to the board is our draft community host agreement. This document is titled Final Draft because we are required to draft the first iteration. It's our final draft for your review. Mm -hmm. um, and accompanying that final draft is another guidance document on community host agreements. Um, as we have been discovering, things are not particularly clear. Um, <laughs> so not to insult the board, but uh, I thought it might be helpful to have that as a reference while you're walking through the agreement would you like me to walk through the agreement or uh, would you like to could you tell us what's not clear um i'll this is an agreement that will probably look very familiar to you it's very similar to um our friends the tornado mountain <laughs> policy um what's different in our Post community agreement is, um, we feel is because we're applying for a craft marijuana cooperative license. So our com proposed community, our proposed community impact payment calculation um, is different than Tornado Mountains uh, and the discussions you've been having with Tor Tornado Mountain. Uh, we've proposed three options with a preferred alternative of one B one B one. One B one. So everything else should be uh, no with very little or, or no difference of the post community agreement you've seen before. But um, we recognize that this uh, community impact payment is um, is probably the most important part from the select board's point of view, and it's the most important part from our point of view because it requi it requires uh, payments for our operation in the town. Um, there's a second guidance on post community agreements that I've. Um, added to the packet because this is apparently is becoming a very uh, controversial issue in Massachusetts host community agreements the CCC has been writing more and more guidance to help towns understand uh, what the host agree community agreement can and cannot do and for my purposes I actually contacted the CCC to ask them because they've been issuing new and varied guidance I contacted them last week to provide a statement for us in the board to reference as we begin this part of our application that is a Gmail uh, document in your packet and finally I wanted to show you uh, where we're headed um, once 
we are able to work out the details of our post community agreement the very last step for us to um, complete our application for the CCC to begin their review is um, this document so this is the certification form that one member of the board would need to sign for the CCC saying that um, you've signed the post community agreement that's all they're looking for is for you to say yes we've signed it from what I can tell they they don't even they're not even asking for the host community <laughs> they don't even look like they want it huh. yeah but that make sure you sign it mm -hmm. all right um so using your policy again as a template for our discussion um the last step that we need to take is to submit a $2,500 check to be held in escrow by the town to cover legal costs for the review of our submission, our applicant's submission, which is our application to the select board. We understand the select board will not undertake to begin any review or negotiation until such time as the funds are received and deposited by the treasurer. And the town will track all use of such funds and supply and accounting of all expenditures attributed to the account and return any unused funds. So I will not write a check here at the table. Um, I'd like to turn it over now to John. Um, we anticipate you have lots of questions about our community impact payment. Um, so we'd like to share with you our feelings and the information we've discovered. First off, I'd like to answer any questions that you have about why are we growing in the middle of the woods or any of that stuff that we can make clear first before we talk about any impact. I think it, and it, was that the gist of your question? Why are we not growing in a 15 acre field rather than up in the middle of the woods? Um, that's a, that's fairly close to it, but go ahead. That's, you, you, you asked yeah, yeah, it then. Yeah, no, no, that's good. They're good. Go ahead. Um, well, we're under chapter 61 so we have an active forestry management plan in our active forestry management plan our state registered forester suggested that we take an area of pretty much scrub and blow down uh, at the top of our property uh, it's about a five to eight acre flat area he said you should level this and make this an upland meadow it was at one stage in Upland Meadow. There's stone walls all around it. It's pretty well protected up there. Gretz gets great light everywhere. We have to do that anyway. So what we thought was a couple of things. We're gonna try this out on a smaller scale, about 200 to 250 plants to start with. That'll fit nicely there and It'll be out of view of anybody. It won't have any impact on anyone driving by. Our closest neighbor can't see it even in the winter. That's what he said there. He's not concerned with the odor. Um, we don't want to create something on this part of the, on the field part of the property where do you do you do do you grow things on that on the field? Do you grow our hay or our neighbor or? right now we do grow hay. Our neighbor Quint Anties hays that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And and we work something out with him up for that. Um, this was all. I don't know if any of you remember this property, the Chin Farm. It was pretty overgrown. It was pretty run down. Um, we spent the last five years kind of hoeing it out and straightening it out. A lot of a lot of mowing. Um, so here we found that it would be the least impact and we're not gonna suffer at all for exposure to light there. Um, a little background that I have, um, I've been a farmer f in Massachusetts for about 25 years. My last experience was with hybrid black walnuts in Amherst, maybe you've heard about that deal, is Amherst, Hadley, and, and in New Hampshire. It was a 250 acre plantation um, my family's been farming for five generations. I'm a 12th generation Massachusetts resident. Um, so we're familiar with what it takes. I'm familiar with what it takes. Um, so we thought to limit the impact on the town more than anything. And because there are 
provisions in the guidance documents for farmers, we found that we might be able to not fence the whole thing. Um, they're calling for that for guidance for farmers. They know that it <coughs> would be onerous for a farmer to fence a whole field, security-wise. What they talk about for fencing and security in the guidance documents is meant for buildings and inner city, where most of the marijuana is grown right now. That's what the laws are for, for fencing. And they specifically <coughs> talk about fencing um, waivers if you can prove that it's out of view and it's not a hazard. So, so you'll be applying for a waiver rather than putting a fence up? No, we're going to be putting fences up, but we're going to be putting fences up, as I said at that meeting, fences, what we're concerned about more than anything are for deer, browsing right down. Right. Um, and the fences... I, I know, but I just don't know what the, what the rules are uh, for fencing. Um, yeah, there's, uh, there's specific <laughs> guidance documents about that for farmers um, in the statute. Can I add something? Right. Um, so we have we spoke to the planning board uh, member on Friday night. Um, Joe was at the meeting. He he was a little unclear too, and I think this is going to be a process just like a process with you. We're going to walk through sure. this and figure it out. Um, at our our best read, uh, we may need a waiver. It will be up to the planning board, I believe, according to Article 11. Um, but I'm not a lawyer, so. Uh. <laughs> Neither am I. But, but, but in all, everything I've heard about growing marijuana, I've always heard about putting fences up around it. And then you, you sort of said, well, we're going to have it in the woods, but just have this little three strand deer fence around it. And, and that. And the reason why different. is, and the reason why is we get back to the dispelling the myths about it, and that's that it has absolutely no harm to the public. No, no, I'm not, I'm not it, arguing it has whether no it's harm, reasonable harm or to not the public. Reasonable. It's of no economic value, and it's of no danger to anyone yeah. till the last six weeks, where we'll have a 24-hour guard there. Yeah. So. No one's going to pick it up and walk it away. They'll weigh close to 800 pounds each. So it's not something that just be picked up and carried away. Yeah. So th that's where we are there. So getting back to... How, how are we time? Yeah. I mean, I, we, I, we I have to be across the street before 8 o'clock. Well, unfortunately... Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, Okay, let me buzz through it then, um, because we. Do you have five minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Let's let's wrap it up. Five is five good. Minutes. Okay. <clears throat> Bring you back when we can have them on the agenda, without like a whole lot of crowding crowding in. Well, what what happened? Let's let's just yeah. continue. Yeah. Okay. Okay, where we are is really quickly, we want to clarify the difference between a 3% tax and a 3% impact fee. We're all clear about that. One is a gen revenue generator, which is 3% tax. For we're not retail operations. Right, we're not retail, so that doesn't apply to us. Right. The other is a fee. And under the law, the legislature wrote uh, a host community may include a community impact fee for the host community provided, however, that the community impact fee shall be reasonably related to the cost imposed upon the municipality by the operation of the marijuana establishment or medical marijuana treatment center and shall not amount to more than 3% of gross sales of the establishment or treatment center or be effective for longer than five years. Any cost to the city or town imposed by the operation of an establishment or treatment center shall be documented and considered a public record, as defined by Clause 26 of Section 7 of Chapter 4. So what we're saying in our impact statement here, or our, what we're trying to negotiate here is, and, and what we believe we're trying to negotiate here is, how do we put this establishment in and have no impact on the town? This needs to be a net negative for the town. And we believe that that's what the impact... I mean, net was. negative, Im, no negative impact. Correct. So a, a net positive for the town. No, 
It's not a net positive. It's a net zero. For neutral. Ah, it's yeah, neutral. Neutral. It's neutral. It's not a revenue ah. generator. And they ah. specifically <laughs> talk right. about not being a revenue generator here in the guidance for host community documents where it says, it talks about fees, user fees and regulatory fees. And regardless of what category it falls into, quote, the fee charge must be in exchange for a benefit received by the marijuana establishment in such a way that it justifies assessing the cost to that establishment, even if the public also receives a benefit. The commission views fees that are reasonably related as those that compensate the municipality for its actual or anticipated ex expenses resulting from the operation of the establishment. Not all establishments, our establishment at 40 Whiteley Glen Road. So if we have some impact on the town there, we want to make sure that you're compensated for it, you know? Some of the things that they talk about that are acceptable, to give you an idea, to just, you know, throw some creative ideas out there. Um, traffic intersection design studies, where there's heavy traffic, definitely could see that. That would benefit us, you know, would benefit the town. Environmental impact or stormwater or wastewater studies, those would benefit us, and that's something that would, we would pay for. Public safety personnel, overtime costs during times when higher congestion or crowds are anticipated, also an impact to the town that we would pay for. Additional substance abuse prevention programming for the first years of operation. Absolutely. John had mentioned this a couple of times. Health and education, we're all about it. Mm -hmm. um, and municipal inspection costs. Those are some of the basic beginning ideas of anticipated impacts. They're all going to be documented anyway in public records, so we'll know what they are after the first year. Any impacts that we incur will all be documented after the first year, so we'll know that they're reasonably related. So in our, in our really quick to wrap it up, what we had talked about for impact payments is there's a precedent right now set for cutting the fees in half for outdoor growing. Are you, you're all aware of that? No, where's that precedent set? Um, that's set in the fees for cultivation. Um, here, in the application fees and the annual license fee, outdoor is half of what indoor is. And that's for farm. For the application fee? And for the annual license fee. And for it's the license fee. Correct. It's half. They also talk about a number of waivers if you want to look through the guidance for farmers, trying to make it equitable for farmers. And if you really look at the impacts, we're going to operate six months of the year. We don't have impact full year. Mm -hmm. We don't have any stormwater, wastewater, traffic, no impact. So essentially what you're saying is you're going to be growing three acres of marijuana and it won't have any more impact than growing three acres of corn. I, I believe not. I think corn has more of an impact because most of it's fertilized with urea fertilizer in order to grow. You can't spray pesticides on marijuana. We're going to grow biodynamically, which mm -hmm. is actually no inputs from outside of our farm hopefully it's all going to be composted with no synthetic fertilizer so we'd have absolutely less than growing corn hmm. a whole lot less interesting position so we need to wrap it up well the inside would has a has huge i mean he, the impacts insider i know we do but i mean just to go to that point john i just read last night about the impacts on indoor growing in the united states hmm. 10% of the electricity right now used in the United States is to indoor marijuana growing. 10%. 10% in the whole United States? 10% in the United States. Really? It takes, and this is the statistics from power generation, for one kilogram of cannabis to be grown, it takes four times more power right now in the United States than a kilogram of aluminum to be smelted. Mm. It's a lot of electricity. We're trying to push for outdoor growing and trying to tr create a model like, okay, it's half the cost. Th there's no impacts to the town because we're, we're basically hiding it <laughs> away from everybody. We don't want people to be drawn to it. Mm -hmm. We want it to be gone from the town in one fell swoop, <laughs> you know? 
And um, we believe that the precedent for setting it at 50% would be like, okay, here's our baseline. Let's start at 50% of the 3% max because it's only an impact for half of the year. And what we really say is that, you know, honestly, we don't believe there is an impact. And really, honestly, over the course of the last five years that we've been here, we've averaged $6,000 a year at Owesco is what we spend there. Just starting to get up and running. Once we get moving, we'll spend an order of magnitude there larger. We'll probably spend $60,000, $70,000 there a year. Mm -hmm. I've spoken to Russ French and he's allowed me to say on record that he would not turn down the money from a marijuana establishment. <laughs> <laughs> so he might not bake a cake for us, but yeah. you know. Okay. okay. So anyway. So last point we wanted to talk about was just the quick numbers of the, how a 3% would affect, as defined would affect. So, you know this isn't agricultural. I know not by zoning it's not agricultural. But if we talk about a percentage on our gross for a farm, it's hard for me to negotiate a percentage of gross when in our first year we're talking about putting up 150 to 250,000 to hopefully grow 300 to 400,000 if everything's executed perfectly. If we don't execute perfectly and we are at, we lose half, we have a tornado in town, God forbid, and it gets wiped out. If we're breaking even and we have $250,000 of sales and $250,000 of costs and you ask us for 3% of those sales, it's going to be hard paying three thousand or seven thousand dollars out of two hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of sales if I don't if I don't have an income myself. Mm -hmm. Sure. And, and that's the only part that I see would be onerous. If I mean, I wanted to negotiate on net. But I said, "Geez, let's pay net. Mm -hmm. If we net money." And and I really I want to leave you with the last thing is I think that there is precedent in this town for probably one of the most beautiful buildings in town was given by a successful businessman. It wasn't taken from him, it wasn't asked for. True. It was given. Mm -hmm. The town helped him to be successful, he loved the town, and I think that that really, we plan to give back to the town if we're successful, and, and I think that that's what we're trying to promote. Okay. For the audience, he's referring to the Marshall Library. Library. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Marshall Fields. Marshall Fields. <laughs> yeah. Good to be clear. Okay. okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank so you for coming. Sure. Thank you for your time. John. John, thank you very much. Lisa. Uh, thank you. The, uh, sorry what the time to really converse with you about no, it. No, it's all right, Phil. Thank we'll you very much. Next, Absolutely. Next week. Well, maybe across the street. <laughs> yeah. Thanks again. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. So this is this is the same issue again. Tom, let's get to those pole here. <laughs> yeah. Is the guy here? Or do we'll have him anyway? Oh, I we'll have him anyway. I, I don't know that there's anything no, controversial I, about him. I, I, there might be. But the neighbors what, are here. Let's what, let's sure. Check. But looks like I was there on the other side. I can take you there in five minutes. No, I. When can we ever make the utilities bury the lines instead of just make bigger ones with more poles? Oh, no. Is that what you're here for? No. Oh, really? That's what I'd like to do. So I feel they're here for the poll hearing. Oh, no. Are people guys They wrote earlier and I sent this one. <laughs> I never, we never thought it All right, Tom, looks at the hearing. Feel the width of no fencing. It has to be in the Yeah. Do we, do we have any serious opposition? Um, I think I think we're just going over what, what's actually happening. No, no, no. no. So, you, mine, uh, so there's the reason, and then there's, there's okay. the, the schematics for it. 
Joe, is it clear to you what they want to do? No. Nope. They're, they're putting poles in between I, existing I can tell poles. you what they want to do. Yeah, they're just shortening spans. In order to shorten the span because they're putting in thicker wire. So that's the plan. That's the one your Joe's having. So sure, open the pole here. I'm, okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, there's, there's two but who has things here. Yeah, you, you've dropped the envelope. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. I meant to. Okay. Uh, this is uh, take one from the top, one from the bottom, and pass them down. You gave us one here. I think you gave us both these already. Oh no, you didn't give us the picture. Not the picture. That's one. That's Maple Street. This is. Did you get this one? He, he gave us this one earlier. Yeah. I mean, you can have this, but. Oh, the picture was on the back. Three. Gave it to us. Ah. That is good a picture. Peace. Um, same thing here. This is for Old Cricket Hill Road. Do not do not confuse the two. Old Cricket Hill Road is more confusing than I can tell you about it. But. Good. We have four minutes. But. Let the record show the poll hearing is open. Okay. So what if, all right. Let's uh, let's open the poll hearing. Hey Joe, you guys ready? Yeah. No, no, but I mean, so All right, we'll do we'll do Maple we'll do Maple Street first. Okay. Yeah. Or if they want to talk, we can do the other one first. No, they're they're from Maple Street. I know they're from Maple Street. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Tom says we can. Oh, yeah, we're gonna. Okay, we're gonna open. We, we, we can. We can just. We can do it without. It's All right. Yeah. 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 Yeah
to the, the wetland and marshland up to oh, Tim Morgan's house, up to Cricket and up to Cricket Hill. So you put. So, so, you, so your driveway is up here. You're, you're, no, 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 you're, you're adding, right you're adding right one new pole. Our driveway goes right like this and like this. Why do they want to have a pole? And it goes a, half, so, a third of a mile back like that. And this pole is so, existing. So, so here's, here's a photograph. Okay. Here's your driveway. Right. And here's the existing pole. Right. At the yes. end of our driveway. And, and we buried a third of a mile of utility lines back this way. Now they're saying they're going to put a new pole right there, right. which is the middle of this view shed. I'm a landscape historian. It ruins the view shed. Why not so, put the pole there? So across the street would be better. Yeah. Across the street would be much better. And, and right, it doesn't Tom, seem Tom, so we're going we're we're to table this until we can get okay. the yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, uh, average yeah, source in here. Sounds, okay. but, but that's great feedback yeah, yeah, yeah. that I can I give to every source. Let, let's Never collect that. Yeah, we're tabling that one. Great. Okay. okay. Old Cricket Hill. Thanks for coming Thank in. Thank you. Old Cricket Hill. Old Cricket Hill. We just do. I'll make a motion. Next week. I'll make a motion that we table now. Do I have a second? Yeah. Until next week. Sure. Yeah. Second. For, yeah. for whenever we can get every source in here. Yeah. Yeah. Can we make sure that they're not? Can we make sure that they're notified? Yeah. yeah. You, you, we're, we're notified. Right now we're as tabling. Right. We don't know when we're going right. to reschedule. Right. Okay. We should be. Do we have a second? Yeah. You didn't get a postcard. All right. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Next hearing, Tom. Totally by chance that we're here, so should I give you our, you know, John. name and the uh, Yeah, they, they, they should have... Uh, it's 8 o'clock. Right. We should continue the next one, one, too, John. Um, Joe, you're, 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 okay. you're, you guys are tabled. Yep. Until yep. next time. <laughs> he made a motion. Well, and it's going to be more than a week. Yeah, yeah, he, he made was, a motion to table second it. Motion I seconded it, yeah. and we passed it unanimously. Okay, thank you. All right, the next one is the uh, old Cricket Hill Road. Yeah. So we just did that one. We just, no. We okay. No. We I would say we gave that one also. No, no, we did Maple Street. Okay. It's 8 o'clock. Uh, there's nobody here from old Cricket Hill. So we could, I mean, so you could move that If we go out in the backyard, we'll be old Cricket Hill. <laughs> so I, I can tell you what's happening on old Cricket Hill. I is someday they're going to voluntarily just is, is there any reason you can see that, that there would be opposition to it? No. Okay. No. But it's at the customer's request, in my understanding. The, the, the customer has underground wiring that goes from a nearby pole all the way to their house. This pole is going to go right adjacent to there because they actually need to put it in a step down transformer yes. because underground wiring isn't sufficient to carry the higher voltage that, right. they're, that they're putting right. in. Yeah. So it's for the customer's yeah. benefit. Yes. Okay, okay, so can maybe we, we can, can pass that on one? that. What do we have? I'll make a motion that we approve the pole, the additional pole for uh, Old Cricket Hill Road. Do okay. I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Thank you, Tom. So is there more we have to do, or is that? Uh, yes. Um, Lisa? We actually need okay. you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. <laughs> have a good night. So they had a great suggestion. I don't know if you were following their suggestion. They can tell you about it. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah. We'll, so we'll have to check with everyone. Yes. 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 Apparently, we're the only ones on Maple Street that were notified about anything, right? I don't know. I wonder if their property is not documented somehow or something. That, that their address is Maple Street. I know. You but know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. So we assumed they were here. Uh, we should assess the Okay. No, no, they were. Yeah. They're nowhere near the other property. Sign. Okay. See you later. The other property is a half mile away. Thank you. Um, and that, uh, uh, are they all waiting for us to cross the street? Uh, Probably. Well, they'll wait. I have to say it's seven because oh, that's, what that's, that's, that's one of the schedule. Right. <coughs> we should hurry them up more. Yeah. We tried. This is a good play. Tom, we're going to have to skip your update. Yeah, that's okay. Well, I didn't realize this um, was going to be You can read it. The one, the one oh, piece of mail is that uh, last time. 
Representative Lay is requesting capital projects of less than a thousand dollars. Three ideas. Right. Please get me any take, ideas you take have. Care of it. That sounds like a motion to adjourn. Yes. Okay. I'll make a motion right. to adjourn. Second. Grab a second. Aye. Any favor? Um, I'm okay. not sure.